Hi Rahul and welcome to our series Tricks of the Trade. We are so excited and overwhelmed to have you and you have taken out time in your busy schedule to give through the series. It's a very, very important for us talking about the series, why we are doing this, why, what is the reason behind Tricks of the Trade. So you, as you know, there are a lot of people who want to go into the sales field, but don't have knowledge, especially in yeah. the B2B market, right? And people, uh, like they read books, but uh, knowledge from experts, like who are doing in the business, right? Who are in the company, who are doing, putting on the efforts, putting on the skills and doing what they do, right? So that's why we have the series, uh, Tricks of the Trade, talking about Curate. Curate is an I'm alumni venture. And what we do, we create the best every teams for various startups. So Rahul, uh, tell me about your journey. Like, how did you go into the sales, right? And why B2B markets especially? And what your experience is there? Uh, first of all, yeah, th thank you, Amrita, for having me. Uh, it's good to be here. And uh, yeah, like you said, uh, I was uh, I graduated engineering in engineering. I was a mechanical engineer. It was way back in 2019, and uh, I took an automobile specialization there. I was I was like pretty much into uh, cars and bikes from the beginning. Yeah, and uh, I mean engineering didn't happen as it plan. I mean as I planned. As so, what happened was by the end of uh, by the end of the fourth year, I realized you know I could really talk well about cars and bikes very passionately about us and us together and then i realized you know what i might as well make money uh talking about cars and bikes so i thought uh, okay let's try it. automobile sales yeah and then the first job happened it was with bmw motor here in bangalore i started as a sales executive and i enjoyed my work a lot there uh, it was basically you know talking about cars and bikes and selling it to people so that is how sales happened. It was it it was not a pl planned path. I would say it just happened. It just happened, and a couple of years down the line in the automotive field, I thought it, it's time to make a change. You know, uh, uh, it was time to. I mean, I grew into the role, and I was like, there was nothing more uh, more that you could have done in that same role. So I thought, you know, it's time to step up. And then a couple of years down the line, I got to uh, know about the SaaS industry and how sales people are also working in the SaaS industry and it uh it it was very intriguing to me yeah because uh, sitting uh sitting here in india talking to people all over the world and uh, try to talking about their problems trying to sell a product that might be able to solve their problems so all of it was very interesting to me seemed very interesting to me and then i thought okay it, it is time for me to change the industry but yeah i i thought you know i have to remain in sales because i love doing it i love selling to people and uh, so i got an internship gig at springworks last year and before starting as an sdr full-time i thought you know i have to try it out first and then mm -hmm. i have to try it out first and i thought uh might as well start with an internship right so i started as an sdr intern at springworks and i took up all these uh uh, I took up like, like multiple hats wearing, you know, conducting marketing campaigns, giving up demos, doing cold calls to people. And I started really enjoying the work. And after the internship, I was very well prepped for the full time role. And then I'm, uh, I was, you know, looking for a newer challenge in a better industry at a better market. And mm -hmm. uh, so I thought, you know, US market. So it, it has a lot of potential and a lot of a lot of scope for growth as an STR for me. And that is how Alma Base happened. Yeah, it's been it's been about four months here now, and it's been going pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a very interesting journey from engineer background to the sales, and how you passion, uh, how you follow your passion, right? Uh, you love to talk to people, and you love to build a relationship with them. So you join sales, and yeah, sales people are well known to have the convincing skills and to talk to different people, right? So talking about that, uh, main point in B2B SaaS market is to get the leads, right? Lead generation is the first step and the main step. So what are your ways in cold strategy as well as warm strategies? And uh, what do you prefer? The LinkedIn reach out, the email reach out, the calling, cold calling. And when talking about warm reach out, uh, if you have any connection, so how do you make sure that you utilize that connection for your benefit and for your company's benefit? uh see as uh if you're talking about cold reach outs right i mean you you're possibly trying to reach out to a person uh, or sell to a person who's never met you or 
who might have never heard about you or your product or your company right yes. and then you're you're just on a call or an uh, or a message uh, you're just trying to to uh, you know, uh, give them some sort of uh, a value that you know, and expecting something in return from them. Say, it's, if it's a cold call, and I'm like, you know, I'm Rahul from Alma Base. We we do this, we do that, and it might help you in that way. It's a very less chance to latch chat. I mean, the main thing that uh, it is is like keeping in mind that not all the cold calls are going to work, not all the cold emails are going to work. But only thing is, the effort from your side should be a hundred percent, more than a hundred percent, actually. And uh, the one thing that generally works is getting to know the people that you're reaching out to before you reach out to them. Do your own homework, uh, see what they like. Maybe do a professional digging on LinkedIn, see what they've been up to till now. Something you know, uh, something that uh, might you might use as a hook. So, uh, like at Springworks, I I I I was trying to reach out to a person in a company. He was he was a C-suit level executive. But I found out on LinkedIn and Instagram that, uh, you know, uh, he was very much interested in riding bikes, going on longer tours. And, and you know, he had a very similar kind of interest phase as me. And I found that and I'm like, I I should I shot a cold, cold email uh, to him writing about the pro. I mean, before before getting to the point, I just wrote a couple of lines, you know, and then the reply comes in after a couple of days, you know, uh, I might not be in the market for your product, but yeah, since you've done a little bit of a due diligence, I might as well take a shot at it and let's meet next week. Yeah. So uh, it it won't happen right away. So if you're new to it, it there is a learning curve to it. It won't happen right away. You have to know the trick of the trade, uh, like I said before. Uh, it's, it's just getting to know people and being genuinely interested in them is what works out at the end of the day. Like maybe what they're up to or maybe what problem they're facing. Mm. You might have the best product in the world, but you won't be able to sell if the other person doesn't find value in it. So I would say, yeah, get to know the people. I think that that works. E either it is a cold or a warm reach out. As you said, to as you said that how you reach out to that person based on a common interest between you and him. So, uh, give us what tools do you use to do the market research? It's a sales navigator. It's this LinkedIn. Uh, uh, LinkedIn reach, uh, LinkedIn research. So, what tools do you use to do your market homework before meeting any potential client, or before like targeting that client, right? So, what your ways of doing that market research to make it more useful? So, uh, I mean, at my last gig, wherein I had to do a cold outreach. I mean, I, when when it was coming to lead generation, right? We used to use a couple of softwares. One was Apollo and Lucia mm -hmm. to get the details of the people I'd want to reach out to, and then to find relevant prospects, I would use just the simple sales navigator from LinkedIn. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, so these are these are the basic tech stack that we use, and to just lot, I mean, start out the marketing campaigns, go send out cold emails on bulk. We used to use Lemlist from a company called Lempire. So yeah, this was the tech tech stack that we used to use to do our outreach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, talking about market research, like what uh, research you think uh, should be checklist before meeting any uh, potential client? What should be the checklist that you should know this about client, you should know that about your client. So how do you make that checklist that at least when you're talking to them, you are not their blank. They don't, don't think that you do the same pinch to everyone. And like it's just a sales pitch, right? How do you make sure that you customize it? And how do you collect information beforehand? What are the checklists do you use? Yeah. So, uh so i mean it's it's not like a single step process right when selling a product to from a business towards a business it's a long term relationship in the making so before jumping out to demo what we do is something called as a catch up call or an initial call where we just talk for about 15 to 20 minutes you know gathering information just collecting insights as to what problems they're facing and uh, you know getting a much broader idea as to what we can expect from the client's perspective, like what kind of problems they're facing. And the very next step at the demo stage, uh, we would possibly tailor the demo in such a way that we are answering to each and every uh, objection or a query from the client side, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's always uh, it's always like a two-step process when meeting with them. First, doing an initial catch-up call, getting to know them properly, getting to know all the doubts and everything. And then on the demo stage, we'll just go about solving each and every problem with them. Yeah. True, true. As you said that, uh, 
before reaching out, knowing about the client, uh, knowing about how to handle the objections. So talking about objections, so while uh, let assume while you are giving a demo, the objection comes out that uh, the competitor price is much better than what you are offering or anything objection like this feature is available in our competitor or your competitor right but you are not providing us why should we buy from you this type of objection uh, comes uh, like generally so how do you handle these type of objection what your ways or what strategy do you use um coming to the objections part actually so right now the product that we build and sell um it's not that i'm bragging or anything but uh we are like the best in industry so the thing is the water water features or any anything that they ask for we already have it and the best part is if they request for anything new we are very happy to build and give it to them yeah. so if 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 i say if i talk about something that i used to do in the past whenever an objection coming in say it's it's a similar product but then uh you know why you priced higher or anything like that it's just uh not i mean Pricing discussion is important. I mean, that is the only only thing that matters at the end of the day, right? As in what value they're getting out of it. But before that, how efficiently are we able to solve the problem, and what kind of uh, what kind of value does the customer at the end customer is finding? And uh, it's it's up as an SDR as as an account executive. It's 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 like our responsibility to you know instill that a sort of value proposition in them so that they you know they just go ahead and neglect the pricing at the end of the day. So it all comes down to the kind of experience that you're offering. Maybe uh, at the demo stage, maybe at the initial call stage, the way that you're building relationships with them, the way that you're you know uh, uh, going ahead with your conversations, the way that they're uh, you know entrusting you with their uh, time and resources right mm. so it all comes down to the way that you're dealing with people that's that's just the core that's just the core uh, what do you say core value and sales okay. like the way you deal with people mm. yeah. talking about demos demos can be sometimes very long right talking about every feature is not a way a person should give the demo right so how do you make sure that the demo is engaging rather than the demo is all about you bragging about your product that does not help the customer right so how do you make yeah. sure that the demo is engaging the demo is short and people get engaged rather than get bored and being like yeah uh, left out uh key uh, key to this key to keep the demo engaging is to just listen more talk a little bit talk mm -hmm. talk to the point and try to listen more and more for every feature that you show for every point that you try to put out just ask ask for a feedback tell them that they're you know okay going forward uh, just keep on asking questions to them and try to listen to whatever queries that they have then and there itself it's not like you know i might have like a hundred features on the demo and i'm it, it's not gonna it's not gonna be useful like it's not gonna be a very useful uh, thing to do like uh, explaining all the hundred features in that single demo right i mean if the client wants the Y feature and I'm just going on explaining about A to Z and he he's, he obviously isn't going to be interested, right? Since I'm not just getting to the point that, you know, he wants to be addressed. So keeping it like very short, keeping it crisp and trying to listen more at all points, at all points of the demo and just keep, keep on asking them questions and let them ask us questions so that we can answer everything then and there itself. So I think that is a key for an engaging demo session. Okay. And um, talking about that, Rahul, uh, so what do you think best works? Like, of course, I guess you give the demos uh, through um, like uh, online, right? So do you think that live demo session or better is better or the online mode is better than the live demo session? And uh, what ways, like what are the sources to which you give the demos? It is a fix by the company you work like. You should go give a demo on Google Meet or Zoom, or it's up to you that what you and um, the clients. It's 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 up to the client. I mean, if they're comfortable using Zoom or Gmail, it's it's directly up to them. And uh, coming to the first part of the question, it's uh, the demo is all about like what the client wants, right? It's not anything that is fixed by the company. There's no fixed guidelines so if they're only interested in solving like one problem at a time maybe at all base if they're trying to uh, you know create a mentorship community or an engagement community or something similar we so we have a plethora of features that are available but the, the client is only looking answers to one so one problem right 
So we'll just tailor that demo towards the addressing that one issue that they're having. So it's it's not a fixed set of rules that we follow. It's just as per the client and as as per their preferences. Okay. And yeah. talking about that, do you think that uh, in person or uh, in person when you go to in person meet, it's more useful than the online meet? Do you think there's any difference it makes that live demo is in on the online demos? Uh, I would say it won't make any difference. I mean, it's not practical for us uh, because we are sitting here in India and selling to the US market. So we can't. But uh, say even if it goes to the Indian market, I mean, it won't make that that big of a difference. Uh, you know, it's just uh, on on a, on an online media, it's just as fine. Yeah, it's just as fine. Yeah. Okay, and uh, talking about that, let's talk about the internal communication, right? So how do you make sure that the team you're building with have a smooth internal communication, right? Uh, when you're talking about team, there are a lot of people involved in a particular sales, as SaaS sales, the big ticket size, a lot of uh, internal players are included for one customer, right? So how do you make sure the internal communication between you and your fellow uh, sales person is uh, maintained? And how do you make sure that the information you are getting on the client also you share with your fellow person who is dealing with the same client? Yeah. Uh, first things first, like here in our sales, you know, sales team, I would say we work, we work really well together. One example that I could give you about us working well together would be say if it's an initial call or say if it's a, a meeting to get to know each other or say even if it's a demo right or two of the sds i mean any two people from the same team would be present even if it's my client even if it was my outreach but one of my colleagues would be present along with me on the call and we both try to have this conversation so say uh say i am stuck somewhere uh so at that point of time maybe he'll just take over and you know continue with the conversation so this this is how we try to try to cover for each other that that is the first thing that i've noticed here in armor base uh, that uh, everybody's trying to help each other and then uh crm comes uh, crm plays a very big big role here so we make sure that our crm hygiene is maintained so if any of the any of the sdrs are involved in dealing with the same client we are up to date because it's updated on the crm and we have the responsibility to update all the relevant and pertaining notes towards that so that and we tag each other also in the notes so mm -hmm. that helps and yeah we try our level best to keep everybody informed and, and we have these daily sales meetings right we call it the war room the sales war room wherein we just meet up and you know talk about the meetings for the day the meetings that we booked like last week or last day so yeah we we, we try our level best to you know just communicate by, very well with each other and, mm -hmm. and it's across, it, it's not just among the sales team it's across the other cross i mean cross function i mean it's across other teams also like the cast cs team or the product team or the marketing team so we do that okay awesome like internal communication is very very important while talking about sales yeah talking about that um how do you determine the most qualified leads right there are a lot of leads you generate right be it inbound be it outbound right so how do you make sure that the quality you are going chasing a lead that would be converted right rather than chasing those leads that don't have the purchase power don't have the intent right so how do you make sure you do that Right. And uh, while pitching, what do you think are the common mistakes a salesperson make while pitching to different stakeholders? Because you are talking to C-suit level people, right? When talking yeah. about B2B, you're not talking to a normal customer or consumer. You're talking to a manager level, a senior manager or the decision maker itself, right? How do you make sure that the person who are talking um, don't make mistakes okay and what do you think are the common mistakes in the sales pitch that people make uh one most common mistake that you know a sales or uh, sales guy might make in the pitch would be i would say being too pushy mm -hmm. and uh, you know not thinking about anything else and then just trying to get them to a demo meeting or an initial call and then they'll be like okay but today i booked a meeting so I think that is the most like uh, the the uh, it's a it's a, it's a mistake. I mean, uh, may the agenda of the call should only be to you know get to know them and see if they uh, if they would be interested in speaking with you. Like the, you have to just you know that there, there is so in our uh, cold call scripts there is this thing called a torch question. We just 
uh, throw light on a very huge problem that they, that we think that they might be facing and you know it it might just grab their attention rather than just you know just blabbering about my product for like two minutes and then asking them you know can we meet for a demo mm -hmm. so i think that is that is that one thing that i've noticed a lot of uh, people in the beginning that they make you know trying to get them to demo trying to get them to demo but the main agenda here should be just uh, let them know that you are here to solve a problem for them so i think yeah that and talking about qualified leads, how do you find the most qualified leads? Like, as you know, there are a lot of leads coming in. So how do you find the suitability and qualification that yes, this meet our expectation and they can purchase our product? So uh, for us here at Alma Base, right, we have a we we for, we have a very uh, strict ICP that is the ideal customer profile that we that we go ahead and reach out to and that, that is what the marketing team takes care of so basically we have this uh, criteria like a five set of five or six criteria like the number of people in their advancement team or else the size of the alumni uh, network of the college and then uh, the kind of events that they're doing so we have this criteria so if at all any any end customer is not fitting into this bracket of people we would not reach out to them because again it would it would not be a mutual fit for us to you know uh, go ahead and take them as a client nor they would be able to make use of okay. Alma base as a thing so we, we we already have those systems in place mm -hmm. so that our outreach is directly on point yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, talking about that, sometimes B two B sales process are a bit longer than B two C. So, how yeah. do you maintain strong relationship with your clients so that the closure rates are high, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than breaking of the relationship, or rather than what happening that uh, clients get uh, like clients get other priorities. So, how do you maintain that relationship so that you get the most closures? Mm -hmm nurturing them with value i mean uh first things first like once the initial call is done they might they might come up and say hey you know uh, it was good but then again we're not in the market right now maybe you know give us a call in about six months time or maybe eight or ten months time and maybe next summer or something like that and the one thing that you could do is you just not cut out the conversation then and there you just let them know hey uh, i'll just you know uh, send you this, uh, send you a link to this webinar that might be useful, or maybe once in a while I might send you a blog post that we've just come up with. And yeah, just take a look at it, it might help you in some or the other way. And uh, just keep on nurturing them and maybe just call, uh, not call, I would say. I mean, you could call, but yeah, just just keep uh just keep a contact over maybe a mail or a linkedin message saying that hey how are you see i found this blog post that i thought i might might be useful for you so like when the, whenever the time comes for their renewal or whenever they are in the market oh okay okay rahul rahul is on top of their minds at that uh, that kind of time yeah yes. so it, it's very important to continue that conversation and just not break it off and then out of the out of the blue you're calling them after a year hey josh uh last year we spoke blah 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 so i think it's very important to nurture them just uh, have that patience and just nurture them and then maybe maybe when the time is right they'll just they'll just reach out to you since you're at the top of their mind hmm. one yeah. last question that i want to ask rahul that give uh tell us the three tools the most important tools do you think that is very important your day-to-day -day process and you use it daily and also three tips you want to give some freshers who join in the b2b marketplace so that they don't make the mistakes uh, like you or we did right so what yeah. are the uh, three advices and what are the three tools that you use daily um three tools the first tool is a crm right so the, the the moment i step into the office on my desk i just open the crm and i just check for the notifications any new deals that have been added and updating it just maintaining the entire crm hygiene so i spend about an hour's time every day just to clean it just to clean up and just stay on top of everything second would be the email tool i think these two and uh, third is not something that is uh, actually related to uh, related to that i mean the work i mean it is related to work but it is not a software that everybody uses i mean it's it's a it's a note uh, evernote is what i personally use to keep track of my daily activities i have a to-do list on that and uh, calendar of course so calendar the thing is we are so we here have a system of you know 
putting blocks on our, our daily timetable. You know, we have calling blocks, we have blocks for emails. So yeah, I think these these are the main three tools that we use. I think mm -hmm. this 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 uh, of utmost importance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Continue. Continue about the three advices. Yeah, three advices for uh, a fresher. I mean, it's a fresher who's like looking to pursue sales, or it's just a fresher to pursue sales as their uh, like career and so, to the market and B two B. He wants to do. So uh, first things first, like it's 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 a very interesting question, yeah, because. Uh, the thing is like most of my circle who are into b2b sales and myself included right so we were the individuals back in college that uh, i mean the kind of individuals who never had a clue that you know we're gonna end up in sales and end up liking it so much and it was all by accident i'd say chance and the first thing is if you've already made up your mind and if you already realize that you know i want to pursue sales then you're already there so that's that's like halfway done and so the first piece of advice would be uh you know just pick up the phone and you know call people and email people so if you want to reach out i mean if you if you you went to linkedin right you like this company's profile and you thought the product is so cool and then you went to the company's blog and you checked out how the office is and you're like you know i'm gonna work here i want to work here and then waiting for things to happen i would say send that cold email send you know find out the number use a tool called lucia or maybe apollo to get the number of the people and then just start calling them and you're like you know i'm this guy i'm very interested in this will you give me a chance just pick up the phone and dial mm -hmm. and a second thing would be uh detach yourself from the outcomes i would say this is this is going to be uh, an integral part of your life wherein you're going to be facing right. rejection camps right. left right and center on a daily basis right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe on the first interview you would not get it. Uh, only thing is don't uh, don't think about you know I'm gonna score this job and I'm gonna go mm -hmm. this I'm gonna go earn this much commission and all that. Mm -hmm. Just focus just focus on your effort. Just focus on giving hundred percent in your interviews. Just focus on uh, being very crisp and clear and just being yourself. And then and then the result will automatically follow. It's 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 same with the cold call yes. So if you're like, hey, Josh, do you want to book a meeting? And then you're too much stressed, stressed about, you know, booking a meeting and finishing your quota, like, right? And uh, you're, you're so much stressed that you're not able to make the cool calls uh, yes. in the first place. Yeah. So just mm -hmm. detach yourself from the outcome, whether it's applying for a job or whether it's your very first cold call or an email, right? Mm -hmm. Give your like 100, 100%, 200%, and then see, see what pans out. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last one would be, uh there's this oh uh, there's this uh quote i think i've heard somewhere like throw the spaghetti and st see what sticks so keep on trying like shoot multiple shots maybe it's a car sales job maybe it's a SaaS job mm -hmm. maybe it's uh, you're selling something else right you've decided that you want to get into sales so try everything i would say since you're right out of college i mean you the energy levels are very high and you'll be like you know i can go ahead and conquer the world now so yeah go ahead and do that i mean try just just keep on throwing spaghetti everywhere and that one thing will stick and it might be anything it might be b2b SaaS, it might be automobile it might be yeah. some fitness franchise or anything so just keep on shooting your shots and yeah eventually one or the other thing will definitely stick awesome rahul thank you for your advice and the last three advice was very very on point and like listening to them really really like it's all on point and thank you for giving up time in a busy schedule for this and we are so happy that we got to superstar from alma maze and we thank are you. like looking uh, after they leave rahul you are guys thank you for supporting this uh, uh, this initiative of curate to help people and thank you so much rahul and talking about that we are so grateful and it was lovely and very interesting to talking to you Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Amrita. Thank it was you. a nice conversation. Have a great day. Thank you.